Hi everyone, this is Mevi, and today I'll show you how to make my simple calendar component. So first of all, the demo. So this is a simple calendar that displays the current date in bold and the previous days in gray, and where the user can select a date and you get it as, well, not output in the way that you, I have bound it to a page variable where I can use the value further. And the user can go backward or forward in months or in years. Okay. Um, first of all, I'll show you a bit of this logic here. So um, in the page variables, I have uh, this calendar days page variable, which basically contains all the days with the ID as the number of the day itself. So it's 1 to 31 or 1 to 30 or 1 to 29 or 1 to 28, depending on, of course, with month, which month is, it is. And the thing here is that I set the current day as this current date here. And then I calculate in this page logic what the amount of days in the month is and then fill that um, calendar days variable with these ID objects. So what I do here is that I, here is how I calculate how many days there are in a month. So basically I add a month to the, this current date and then I see, well, compared to this, this current date, how many days were added. And from that, I get how many days there are in this month. And then I generate a range from one to whatever this number was. And then I make a list of objects with it by converting the list of numbers like so to objects. All right. Then, um, then I think I'll get to constructing. So how this is constructed is that there are two containers where the lower container is this where the days are repeated and the upper container is where the user can switch months. So first I'm going to do the where the days are repeated. So there will be this as the other container. This is calendar days. And it will be a horizontal container that wraps its children because the days are we want the days to wrap neatly like so. Uh, inside it, we have this, uh, first of all, we have this current months days, which is going to be repeated with calendar days. And we want this to be, the width of this container to be one seventh of the parent container. 14% uh, is approximately one seventh, like it's 14.728 or something, but that's good enough because it wraps like this and it's, it's, it appears correctly. Whoop. Then we want a paragraph inside and here we will put the ID. That is to say, this is the day of the month. Let's do it like so. All right. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just quickly show you here what it looks like now on device. Just so you understand why I do what I'm going to do next. So here you can see that I get the correct amount of days for September 2020, but uh, it doesn't kind of start at the right spot. I use a calendar st that starts on Monday, which is why the first is on Tuesday or looking like it's on Tuesday in this calendar. So what I do here is I have, I put this other container here in front of this container. And this is, I'm going to give this calendar, this um, container, the width that takes as many days as required to fill up, fill up for, the calendar and what I'm going to explain this formula in just a moment. Here, 50 pixels and formula. So here, what I do is I take 
this I use set daytime component on the current date to find a specific day. For here, I want to find the first day of the month. And then I check the difference to this date. This is a Monday. So if you want a calendar that starts on a Sunday, you have to pick a Sunday here. And I want it um, the difference in days and no decimals, thank you. And then I uh, then I floor it because uh, if this otherwise this can, this can be negative if the user has scrolled past this date. And after that, divided by seven and then times fourteen percent. So what this does is that if it is a Monday, the result of this will be zero. So zero times fourteen percent. So it starts at like the first position. And if it's a Tuesday, it's going to be one. So it takes one slot further and so forth. All right. So just to show you now that it's all correct. Yeah, now it starts at the right place. Okay, then to do some of the styling, I'll first do the text weight on this one. So I want to bold the current date. And I've done this by, I'll just take this and explain it. I have done this by comparing um, the here. So I take the current date. Where the current date is basically here just to re represent what month and year the calendar is at. But it also has, of course, a day. And then I replace the day with the current ID here. I don't care about the time. Yeah, I don't care about the time actually, like here it was. So and then I compare it to the current day and only on the day level. And if it's the same, then it's bold because it's today. And if it's not, then it's going to be just regular. And the other thing that I do is, um, well, this has another, another part of it, but I will just explain it and show later more. Mm. So text color. Um, so first of all, I'm comparing this date to the current day, the repeated current to the selected date. So if the user has clicked on one of the days, if, it, if the user has, then it's going to be a blue shade. If the user hasn't, if the day is, date is before today, it's going to be in gray. If it's not, if it's in black, you can modify this as you like just showing how it can be done. All right. And right now, you, I should then have, yeah, now it's colored correctly. But the select date doesn't do anything here yet because other than color, color if I select here because I haven't done the action here. So this is fairly simple. So if the user clicks, taps on the container. We just want to set the selected date page variable to be in the day that was clicked, which is done by so. All right. Uh, now that that's done, we will do the month selector. Um, yes, this is going to be the calendar month, whoops the calendar month container and it will be a horizontal container and i want it to align items on the opposite sides because of this alignment well i will just first put one container and one one paragraph inside and then one more container inside this container because this is kind of going to be an icon align container. It will be backward icons. Backwards, I'm not sure. English is not my first language. Uh, anyway, this will be... The reason I'm using this inner container, this icon container, is because I want a bigger area for the user to be able to tap instead of just the icon. Also, I like to space 
well, yeah, I like to space them out and I like there to be more area to tap in case someone has bigger fingers. So here, I will make this um, so that the user can go one month backwards. So what happens here is that by tapping the icon container, um, the I'm going to set the current date, which was the kind of month and year this is supposed to be at. And I'm going to remove um, a month from it, like so. Simple as that. And then now that I've configured this ready, I will just paste it again. Uh, yeah, this needs to be also a horizontal container. And this one will become the one for years, backward in years. Mm, you. Here. And that I just need to edit this to say years. That's it. Whoop. And then I take this whole backward icon thing and I paste it next to next to here and just switch these icon containers around. Okay. So we since we want this to go forward, I will change this to be add whoops add duration. And same with this one. It shall be add. And then the only thing we need to do is, well, we will, first of all, we will style this just to have a little bit more font weight. And then take the format, the current date to just say the, whoops, uh, month and year, like so. Have I done something wrong? Why isn't it lining like I wanted to? Let me just check. Oh, yes, here. All right. Now, if I am looking at it here, I should see everything working correctly, unless I've forgotten something. Oh yeah, the border styling. Borders here. So I've set this to be so that there basically there's always borders, but you just can't see it unless it's selected because it's the same color as the background. You can edit this as you wish. So it compares that if, if it's the selected date, then it's blue. If it's not, then it's white. Sorry, I was looking at my phone already. All right, so now, now this is how you make a very simple calendar component where the user can select a date. Um, I'm hoping to show you also a calendar where you can kind of display data so you can see, for example, appointments available at a certain date, but I didn't find yet I didn't yet find a way to have that very performance optimized. Uh, the switching of months and years got quite slow. So I'll still look into that and I'll get back to you. Um, if you have any further questions, you can find me on the forums. See you next time.